Yo, everyone, give it up for Phil, yo. What's up, Clifton? Wait, there's another Phil in here? You're Phil? Jeez. Either we're going to hate each other or we're going to be bros. Instant bros. That's the rules of Phil. So, this is my first time in Clifton, New Jersey. I thought I was being catfished, honestly. I was like, this is exactly where I want to be in my career right now, and this is perfect. I was like, I want to do my clothes after this, my laundry, and do this damn show. I, I Googled things to do in Clifton, New Jersey, and Google said, don't. <laughs> I then Googled, is, is Clifton a safe place? And Google said, duck. <laughs> so I feel very safe here. This is awesome. I am from Delaware originally. Has anyone been to Delaware? Border and state? Yeah, exactly. I'm the only person that's ever left the state, <laughs> literally. And it's tough, it's tough to date in Delaware because, you know, you've been there your whole life. The state's very small. Your family has been there for generations. You're related to everyone, <laughs> literally. <laughs> you said that's nasty. <laughs> Girl, you better hold on for this ride. You know, the first minute, you're saying that's nasty. Whew. Wait till minute eight. We are. So I met this girl last year, and I thought that she was the one. I thought she was the girl for me. I was very excited to go home and tell my parents that I met this girl. And my mom starts asking me all these questions, making me real nervous. And she finally leans in. She's like, Philip, oh, that's your cousin. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I was so upset and absolutely disgusted that I could barely bring myself to fuck her one more time. <laughs> I told that story in West Virginia once. Some guy yelled out, ain't nothing wrong with that. I said, listen, sir, I know you think that Ancestry.com is a dating website, but it's not how we do it in the rest of the world. So I had to get out of the state, but I want to tell you a little bit about my journey. I started in Delaware. I went to, I lived in Manhattan for a while, went to LA, and it all started with Crazy Sarah. So Crazy Sarah is a Mormon girl from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, who came to my show in Delaware. Almost as if she couldn't handle the fast-paced Amish life. <laughs> the hustle and bustle of Salt Lake City was too much for her. Why not try Delaware? Now, Crazy Sarah started following me around the shows, driving five, seven, eleven hours to shows. And I'm like, what? Not going to lie, I felt like Justin Bieber for a bit, but I was like, what's up? But then she started following me to work, coming to my house, and I'm like, no, this has got to stop. This is nuts. There's only a matter of time before this broad is going to ask me to move a couch into a van or I'm going to find her boiling my rabbit on a stove. So <laughs> this bitch has got to go, right? So, so one time when she followed me home, I was like, I, I went to her and I was like, Crazy Sarah, I, hopefully you're not, but Crazy Sarah, you got to stop doing this. And she was like, oh, but I have a free plane ticket to Los Angeles, California. Do you want to go? What a sweet girl she is, you know? Like... <laughs> She is just so kind. How does she know that I wanted to go to California? What could go wrong, you know? Who am I to say no? So I'm in California with Crazy Sarah. And she, she tries to have sex with me, and I do everything I can to avoid having sex with her. So I, I tell her, you know what? Like, listen, I'm thinking Scientology. I don't think we should do this because you're a psychopath. Um, <laughs> And that didn't work, so I was like, I gotta up this lie, I gotta, uh, I gotta up this, I gotta think of a story. Uh, okay, listen, uh, you know, funny story, uh, I went to the movies with Tom the other day, and Tom, Tom and I were sharing a popcorn, and the next thing I know, I'm sucking Tom's dick <laughs> in the park, I literally sucking his dick in the parking lot, and Chris there goes, it's okay, Phil, so did I. <laughs> I'm never gonna get rid of this girl. And Chris and Sarah kept bragging about all her connections in L.A., right? And she did. She did have crazy connections. This man introduced me himself as the ambassador of Guam. Wow. Wow. You know, most people go to L.A. to meet Judd Apatow or Steven Spielberg, but me, 
I get to be an ambassador of a country I never heard of. <laughs> he then introduced me to the ambassador of Connecticut, and it got weird. I'm like, dude, you're fishy, but I trust you. He then, he was like, you know what? He was like, Crazy Sarah's told me all about you. <laughs> Let me introduce you to a Hollywood talent manager. I'm like, what? My first Hollywood talent manager? This is awesome. I could be like a backup for like a, one of those Hemsworth brothers or something. Like, you know what I mean? I could do something. <laughs> Uh, so, so I was like, this is awesome. So, and she was everything I envisioned a Hollywood talent manager to be. She had a raspy face, a raspy voice. She only came out at night, <laughs> slept upside down. I was her type, type O. So, and she, she told me, she was like, listen, so if you can help me take care of my husband, who is an 80-year-old man, I'll give you a free place to stay and make sure you get famous. I'm like, what? This is, yes. Who wouldn't trust the ambassador of Guam? Connection, you know? When the ambassador of Guam speaks, people listen. I'm a big deal in Guam. I get all the coconuts I want down the one road, right? So, I mean, I'm, you know what? I'm like, I trust this manager, right? And her husband was Jimmy Stewart. I don't know if you know Jimmy Stewart. Not, not the actor Jimmy Stewart. He's dead. That would be weird if I was taking care of a dead guy. I don't want that. But he was Jimmy Stewart, Jazz Hall of Fame artist. I was like, okay, all right. So this man's seen some, some shit in his life. And he was cool because Jimmy, Jimmy would play pranks on everyone. Like he was an old man. He, was just this, he didn't care about anything. He was like, let me make people laugh. I don't give a shit. So literally we'd be in the doctor's office and he's like, Phil, watch this. Help! Help! I need help! And I, the doctors are running in. Everyone's panicking. They're getting all the supplies. The chocolate things ready again. And he's like, I can't reach the remote. <laughs> I was like, whoa! That's a big move. The doctor's like, we should have put him down years ago. Damn it. I was like, I couldn't. I was like, at least. I was like, oh! <laughs> that's okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, it's not, not again, all right. So, but you know, when Jimmy started messing with my life, that's when it wasn't fun anymore. Because he, he would, we'd have cool moments. Like he would, he would be in his walker. When I met him, he could only walk with his walker. So with, through our training, he was able to walk on his own. We'd have moments like this. He'd, he'd get on his walker. He's like, Phil, watch this. I'm like, oh, shit. He's like, he let go of his walker. He's like, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it, Phil. I'm walking, right? And then he shits himself, and he's like, at least I'm standing. I'm like, you're a dick, man. You're an asshole. So I had to get out of that situation. And I was like, you know what? Let's just try Vegas. Let's try Vegas. California's not working out. Let's try Vegas, right? My buddies find out that I'm in Vegas, and they're like, yo, come to this EDM concert. I'm like, what? What's up? You guys ever hear of EDM? Okay, so... Let me tell you, <laughs> I get to this EDM concert, and I'm like, all right, so this is fun. We're bopping around. We got a nice little private room upstairs, and then, like, I see this long-ass line. There's, like, 250 people in this line. I'm like, I kind of want to talk to people. I'm like, I'm a social person, so I was like, I want to meet some people. So I end up meeting this couple. They're really cool, and this tough guy comes out of nowhere. And he's like, yo, you don't even have a ticket to this concert. You're using these people to get their spot in line. And I'm like, whoa, calm down. Look for my boys. Look for my boys. <laughs> and my boys are nowhere to be found. Which must have been carelessness on their part. Because it definitely wasn't the molly that we had taken. <laughs> it was not. <laughs> being on molly in Vegas <laughs> is like being on fucking molly in Vegas. It was a crazy time. So this guy's in front of me. I'm like, whoa, he's a tough guy. He takes his shirt off. I don't want to confuse him, so I take my pants off. I'm like, what's up? You want some of this now? So then I was arrested. Backfired. So I was like, you know what? I got to get out of Vegas. Maybe go back to Delaware, maybe. Maybe go back to my Christian roots. I've been through a lot, you know? Maybe I need to go to confession or something, like... So I, I go home to my Christian conservative family. Like, let me tell you how conservative my family is, right? My, my, I wasn't allowed to cuss growing up, which makes sense. 
But then there was this whole other list of arbitrary words that I wasn't allowed to say that weren't offensive to the church or anyone for that matter. But because they were offensive to my mother, I had to treat them like they're offensive to Jesus himself. I couldn't say anything sucked. I couldn't say shut up. I couldn't even say the word fart growing up. Yeah. But my mom had alternatives for these words. Yeah, shit is right. You know, shut up was be quiet, sucks was stinks, but fart. Ooh. My mom made me say Fritzy. Fritzy, it smells like Fritzy in here. Fritzy. Who oh, Fritzy? Who did it? Do you know how many times I got beat up on the playground for saying that shit? <laughs> and you would think, you would think that the Fritzy reign of terror would end when I turned 18. It doesn't. Because when you teach a kid to say a dumbass word in their adolescence, it embeds itself in your subconscious. It comes out when you're 23 years old in the locker room full of dudes yelling, okay, who fucking Fritzy? Who was it? So I'm driving down the interstate with my mom, and there's a car in front of us with a bumper sticker that says, I heart great roadhead. My mom is staring at this bumper sticker. She finally leans in. She's like, Billy, what's Roadhead? What is it? Mom, this is a nine-hour drive. I'm not telling you that shit right now. What would you say to your Christian mother if she asked you that? Better think of something quick. <laughs> I, had to. I lied my ass off. I was like, Mom, it's just when you're driving and you have a really great idea. That's what it is. And... It was forgotten about until my grandfather's retirement party. And my mom's given the speech. She ends her speech with, my father's company wouldn't be where it is today without my father's hard work ethic and probably a lot of roadhead. <laughs> and that was hilarious to me. Because that bitch made me say Fritzy my whole life. So that's payback. I'm Phil Kors, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. Yo, give it up one more time for Phil, man. Word. Yeah, let's let everyone come in, guys. You guys can mingle. Find some seats. Find some seats. Y'all real for coming, too. Thank y'all. Yeah, bro, we didn't need a bigger boat. It's all right. I don't even know if it might be easier if some people want to just chill here. It's up to y'all. Whatever's easier. Maybe you could chill, someone chill in a corner, chill here, wherever y'all want to kick it. Y'all can sit on the floor, I don't give a fuck. But nah, for real, if y'all want to sit and kneel down, whatever y'all want to do. Um, so I'm going to pass this over now. Actually, yo, Phil, where can they follow you on Instagram? Uh, or Google YouTube? Or, uh, Google YouTube, anything, anything you want? Yeah, everyone. Uh, if you guys want to know, I was just speaking to the camera here, uh, 2020. Working on breaking a world record for stand-up. Wait, maybe I should say that right. I'm a little high right now. I'm just so really excited. I just came off the stage. And I'm like, damn hype. So uh, I'm going. Yeah. So I'm, I'm trying to break a world record for stand-up. I won't reveal what it is, but if you guys want to keep following me around, uh, that'll be awesome. So P H I L K O R Z. I'll come right up on Google, YouTube, all that stuff. And uh, yeah. All right. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> 